to always begin my talks with saying, by saying, I'm from the IRS and I'm here to help. And it usually gets the same reaction because nobody trusts the IRS and I'm guessing that you guys don't trust your CRA either. But I like to think of us who work on the, uh, the charities part of those organizations as very different um, than the main organization because our job is to help you. remembering I'm on the inside, you're on the outside. There's a little bit of a trust issue, um, but I think this went a long way in um, raising the trust level of the charitable sector working with the IRS. And in my view, we can't have a charitable sector if I just tell you what to do. It has to be a two-way conversation. It has to be me understanding you better and you understanding what my responsibilities are better so that we can come together in a place that provides transparency, accountability, and minimizes whatever burden there is to you because I really want you to spend most of your time doing your charitable mission. The other thing that I think is extraordinarily important is a really robust customer education and outreach program on the part of my organization. Um, what we also have is what we call the Exempt Organizations Update, which is a newsletter, an electronic newsletter, that anybody can sign up for. And when anything happens in the charity world, whether it be legislation, regulation, informal things, um, notices of, of uh, new uh, uh, regulations out for comment, uh, formal or informal guidance, or a schedule of events, you will automatically get it um, on your computer. And all of our charities sign up for that. I'll tell you a little bit of a funny story about that, though, and I don't know if it would be the same in Canada. I was out speaking to some folks in, uh, I think it was in South Carolina, and uh, it was a large group of people, but they had very small charities. And um, I was talking to them about the resources that we can provide for them. And I said, so get your pens out because I'm going to tell you how to sign up for the Exempt Organizations Update. And it's a great tool. And if you're working in the charities area, whether you be a charity, a lawyer, an accountant, anybody working in the charities area, you ought to sign up for this because you'll know what my office is thinking, you'll know what we're up to, um, and you'll know what's going on in the world that you're in. And um, so I said, pick up your pencils and write this down, and what will happen is you go on online and they'll ask for your email address and you give us your email address and then we'll send a confirming email back to you and you'll be registered. And I heard some people talking in the hallway afterwards and they said, I'm not giving my email address to the IRS. <laughs> so once again, the trust factor. We have an advisory committee which is made up of practitioners who work in the exempt area who are interested in being part of our advisory committee. And they apply for the positions and we get really good folks to be on the committee. And um, they So I have a group called our Strategic Planning Working Group. It's made up of people from our examination function our application function, and our lawyers and our customer education and outreach folks, as well as our research people. They take all of that noise, they take the press reports, they take um, allegations that, they've, that Congress is making. They also look at trending data from our application process and trending data from our examinations and data from that 990 form that all the charities file. And they come to me and they say, I think we need a project regarding this issue or regarding this part of the sector. When we decide what, that we're going to do these projects, 
we put out a work plan. So at the beginning of the year, I'm going to tell all of you what I'm focusing on this year. My work plan goes out and says we're going to do this project, this project, this project, this project, and here's the why. So I think transparency on my part is important as well. So we use our press a lot to keep the sector in line. Oh, that's one other thing that, that I do. When I put out my yearly work plan, I invite the press in to come and talk to me about it. Because I think an informed press can help me and help you. If the press understands what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and why I'm looking in a particular area, when one of those reports or those questionnaires go up on the website, they understand and they can write about it. Um, and they help me get my message out. That's very different than most government agencies. Most government agencies avoid the press like the plague. Um, the press, they, they have ways of getting things out of you. Uh, but I've, I've found it to be a good discussion. I think it also helps dispel some misimpressions. I don't really see it that way. Um, when I talk to you about my strategic planning group, I own all of those people. All those people are in my division. The lawyers who do the regulations and do the guidance and do um, private letter rulings, the revenue agents that are doing examinations and, and uh, charity applications, the customer and education and outreach people. That's why they're all on that strategic planning group and every single project I have has a piece for each part of my organization. We used to stovepipe, that was awful. They were over there doing whatever they were doing in exam and we weren't providing any guidance to the public about what was going on in exam because we didn't know. Um, or the customer education and outreach people would decide we need to provide outreach on these 10 things without talking to the applications process or the determination, uh, excuse me, the exam process to find out what do people really need guidance on. So I don't segment it. It's all part of one big process. They just have different roles within the process. And they all also understand that I value incredibly the relationship that I have with my regulated community. I cannot do my job without them. I could not have developed that 990 without them. I ask for their comments on almost everything I do, and I have an ongoing discussion with them. I can't talk to them about a particular case, but other than that, I can have a pretty robust conversation. We made a point, but that's not really what we're trying to do. Um, I am the IRS. Uh, 